This video is going to focus on faculty resources. You can access the library homepage through the link on your CCS Access Manager. And you can access ebooks through the databases A to Z, or you can come to collections, which is what we're going to do now. So the third option down is ebooks. Clicking on that will bring you to this page. And as you can see here on the left, we have several options, including help, open access, and borrowing policies. For starters, we're going to look at the main ebook collection. It says click here, which is what we're going to do. So this is a subscription collection where the publishers choose what goes into this database. So I'm going to look for art history, just something very broad. And for those of you who are familiar with using EBSCO in order to search for articles, EBSCO is our main database here at CCS, um, you'll notice that the interface looks familiar and you can see on the left hand side, you can narrow by publication date, by subject, etc. So obviously I have a lot of choices. I have over 12,000 because art history is really broad. So I am interested in, say, migrating histories of art. So this is just to show you how to interact with ebooks rather than how to search. So I'm going to click on the title and you'll notice that it brings you to information about the authors, where it was published, um, the information about the book. But then what I want to highlight for you is down here. So where it says publisher permissions, you can print email or save 100 pages. Okay, so that is potentially very helpful and I'll get into that in a few minutes, but 100 pages is over the life of the book. It's not every time that you check the book out. This is from a library, uh, our library, which means that the book will check out to you for a set number of days and then once that time expires, the book will return itself automatically. So you can't print 100 pages and then it returns and then you check it out again and print another 100, 100 total. You can also renew your book immediately unless someone else is waiting for it and have placed a hold on it. So there might be another step or two involved in regaining access to the book, but you will not have to wait for it to be returned for X amount of time or anything like that. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is the concurrent user level. So as you can see here, it says unlimited user access. This means that um, any number of students and faculty and staff can access this book simultaneously. So the ebooks within this database are all unlimited. And this is a great option for assigning a reading for class. So if we scroll down, you can see that there's a table of contents here. So I'm going to look at Panofsky, okay, classic. So clicking on the title of this chapter will bring me here and there is the table of contents on the left and then in the center you can see that I am reading the book itself in my browser. This is a really great way to have your students do a chapter from a book as an assigned reading. So if you were to assign this chapter, for instance, what you would want to do is use permalink. So that's listed here. Um, where my mouse is, and clicking on that will give you a link that you can copy, okay? You do not want to use this one. This is not uh, an individual link. It will just take you into EBSCO and kind of drop you. So make sure that you are using this link. All right, so let's go back to the book itself, the book's record. If this was a book that you wanted your students to use, um, uh, as a whole. What you would do is click on permalink for this, okay, and you can see that there is the link there and that would work well. All right, so say you looked at it and you were like, hmm, okay, this looks interesting. I'm interested in reading the full book. You could select full download here on the left hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and click it and it will give you this uh, notice, okay, sign in or create an account. So I'm going to click on that. And this is a free account within EBSCO. So you can either create an account listed here. Um, and you can see that I have an account or you can sign in with Google. 
Either one is fine, but if you sign in with Google, make sure that you select your CCS ID uh, as opposed to a personal email. So I'm going to go ahead and use this free login that I've created and sign in. It'll take a minute to think, but then it will let me download the book. All right, so here you can see I'm downloading it and it says borrow, which means that it will return at the end of seven days. Okay, so you can select how many days up to seven. And as I said, you can immediately renew the book in order to um, have continued access to it. Okay, so yep, this is fine. Now I have Adobe Digital Editions or equivalent. This is something that is mandatory and able to be able in order to be able to download these books. So I'm going to click on this link and you will see here that it is showing up um, in this tab and you can download for Macintosh or for Windows. Okay, this is a free software by Adobe. So there's no charge for doing that. So I already have it installed. So I'm going to go ahead and select full download and that is going to, oops, sorry, download um, as you can see here. I'll close this and um, it's opening within Adobe Digital Editions. So you can see here that I have a library and these are books that I have checked out and you can see there's a little red stripe here and that tells you how many days you have left, if it's expired, etc. So um, you can see that it's fulfilling that and all these books are expired. Okay, If I were to click on them, it would tell me that the book is unavailable. So while this is downloading, um, oh, there we go, perfect. So you can see here the cover, and on the left-hand side, there's the table of contents. So let's take a look at Seductive Four in this. Okay. Um, you can see here that all the images come through, and they are um, of good quality, as they would be in a print book. And if you found something that you wanted to highlight, you could um, highlight it with your cursor and then right clicking will give you the option to highlight or add note to text. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight and add note to text. So I'm just going to say important. Um, and in this way, you can annotate the book, right? So the nice thing about using this um, software is that you can close it and it will remember where you were. So let me bring it up again. Um, okay, so, and it will save your, um, your annotations, your highlights, etc. for as long as you have the book checked out. Once the book returns, unfortunately, you will lose uh, the information that you have highlighted and added in the form of notes, and it will not remember where you were in the book. So there are a couple of workarounds for this. The first workaround is that you can screenshot the pages that have um, the information that you have decided that you want to highlight. We do recommend that you only uh, screenshot the ones that have highlights simply because it's kind of tedious. Your other option is to print and then use a highlighter, pen, etc., to physically annotate the book. Okay, so if I come back here, um, you will see why this print 100 pages is relevant. So that's the basics of um, using ebook academic collection. And I should note that we do recommend that you use um, a computer rather than a mobile device because Adobe Digital Editions is a free software, but it can have some bugs, particularly on mobile devices. All right, so going back to the ebooks page that we got to via collections from the home page you'll see that here we have ebook access and download help, right? So if you forget some of these steps or you run into issues with Adobe Digital Editions, you can try checking out these short videos. They're three, five minutes each, or we have a document that includes screenshots and we'll walk you through the process of accessing ebooks step by step. 
So do you remember how I said that you needed to share the permalink? So um, specific to that one section of the book or that specific book instead of the database. If you give your students a permalink, it will direct them to uh, a page that looks like this. So this is not the regular Blackboard login like you would expect. So what you need to tell your students to do is to click sign in with Google and use their CCS account to log in. And then that will take them directly to either this page, if you did the permalink for the whole book, or the specific chapter that you selected. One other thing that I want to note is that, as I said, all of the ebooks within this collection are unlimited user, but we do have some ebooks that we have purchased individually, and I'll show you those in just a moment, that do not have unlimited user access. So in instances where you need your class to read something, we recommend that you tell them to read it um, and it's not unlimited. We recommend that you tell them to read it in the browser because it does not check it out to them. And so as soon as they have finished reading and left the content here, so they can either just close the tab or come back to this record, it will be available to the next student. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So again, this is the ebooks page, and we're coming back to the main page of this, the overview. And you'll see that we have CCS specific ebooks listed here. So I'm going to click here, and these are ebooks that the libraries have purchased by patron request, um, for course reserves, etc. So these are individually selected. So this is the library's catalog, and let me go ahead and show you elements of design. So clicking on the title, it will act just like a print book in the catalog will act. And you can find information about the subjects, information about the book, where to find the book. Okay, so we have several copies. It's on course reserve and aha, there's also an electronic resource that has a link. So clicking on that will bring you to the record for the book. And if you're not already signed in, you will be prompted to log in at that point. So you'll notice that this looks awfully similar to this. And that's because it's the same software, but this is an individual book. It's not part of a package that we have access to. So let me show you what I was talking about. The libraries strive to purchase unlimited user access so that multiple students can access the book simultaneously. Sometimes that's not available because the publisher has chosen not to make it available or it is prohibitively expensive, in which case we will purchase, it's usually one or three or unlimited. So um, this one has one copy available. So for this book, I recommend that you have your students click on the table of contents and read it within the browser. Your students are also able to download just the chapter that they need, okay? So you can download, um, say you wanted Life and Times, they could download it and read it on their computer and it's theirs to keep. So remember, you have the print email save 100 pages, so that would count towards the 100 pages. So, this system, this EBSCO system, is going to be um, the one that you are primarily using for uh, ebooks in the catalog, etc. So let's go back to the catalog because there are a couple of things that I want to show you. So you can see that we have over 500 ebooks in our catalog, which is great, but it's kind of tedious to flip through all those pages, right? You don't want to do that. So you can do an advanced search. So I'm up here on the upper left hand corner and I'm going to select advanced search. And I'm going to search by keyword. So let's look up photography. But again, I don't want all the photography books. I only want electronic resources. So if you come down here under limit, you'll see that this is an option. And if you check it, it will make sure that you only get ebooks, etc. Um, things that are available electronically. Okay, so you can see here we have 40. So that's a goodly number, but it's not overwhelming like 519 might be. And at any time when you are in the library catalog, you can get back to the ebooks, the list of ebooks, by selecting ebooks here, just under advanced search, and it will bring you back to the 519 results. 
And that information that I showed you about how to download an ebook is also available. So if you look in the center here, downloading ebooks, that will bring you back to this, um, this screenshot step by step instructions. So again, this is what your students would see, have them log in with Google. Okay, and this is a step by step process walking you through logging in, downloading an ebook, reading ebooks, etc. Okay. So Adobe Digital Editions. Now, this is something that's worth noting. It is easiest if you simply authorize your computer without your Adobe ID. Um, but if you want it to sync across devices, so you want to be able to pick up the book on your phone and on your laptop um, and have them talk to each other so it knows where you are, you want to make sure that you do log in with your Adobe ID. And that is something that you set up in order to be able to access the Adobe Creative Suite. Okay, here's information for downloading for cell phones. Again, we highly recommend that you use computers as opposed to cell phones, but I understand that some will need to use cell phones. Okay, lastly, oh, and here's information about your Adobe ID. So the password is one that you set, it's not your Blackboard ID. Lastly, we have some frequently asked questions. So uh, maybe you have an older operating system. We have a link to um, an older version of Adobe Digital Editions. If you have questions about why your highlights did not show up or how to take a screenshot so you can preserve those highlights, that's all here in this document. So if you run into issues, um, and again, highlighting the concurrent user level, so how many people can view it simultaneously and how many pages you can print. Um, we recommend that you take a look at this document and see if something in here can help you. So again, you access this document either through the library catalog here, downloading ebooks, or you can get to it through ebook access and download help. Hello, I'm Becca Pad. I'm the library director and I'll be reviewing the library databases so I'm going to start by sharing my screen and um, there are multiple ways you can access our A to Z databases list from the library homepage, including um, under collections. My, the way that I like to access them is by going to the quick search and clicking on the databases A to Z. So, we have 109 databases. This number fluctuates a little bit depending on new databases we gain access to or other databases we potentially might lose access to over the course of the year. If 109 databases feels like a lot to look through, and for me personally it is, um, there's different ways you can sort this list to find the databases that are most um, relevant to what you're needed. The easiest way is to start by looking for um, subjects. So you can see that we have uh, different subjects, which are our departments at the college, and we've curated databases that are appropriate for the different areas of study. And so this was done by library staff um, with recommendations that we suggest for um, different, different areas. So, for instance, liberal arts has 72, interior design has 16. There's a different database list for the MFA programs. So if I look at interior design as an example, you'll see the database list went down from um, 109 to 16. And these are the ones that we think are good um, resources to start with. And of course, Sometimes what your need is goes beyond this list. And so there's different ways you can search as well if you're not seeing something that's meeting your need. Um, we, every database has um, tags associated with that resource. So you can say, okay, well, I wanna look for more social science databases than are represented on this list. And I can clear the list and search for social science. And I can find 16 databases that we recommend related to um, social science um, information resources. So that's a good um, thing to keep in mind if you are looking for other ways to search this list of information and resources. 
Each database also has a description, so I'd encourage you to read the descriptions if you're not familiar with the resource, just to see if it matches what your information need is. You can see that there's um, different like icons next to the databases. So the unlocked green key, if you hover over it, it says open access. So open access databases are databases that we don't pay for because they're freely available to anyone on the web, but we index them at the library because they're high quality resources related to different areas of study. And so we want to um, point them out to you as a place to find information. You can see on the right hand side that we also have um, the popular databases. So these are databases and this is really geared towards students, but if you're not familiar with our popular databases, it's something to look at as well. Um, but these are different databases for students as research starting points that are pretty easy to use. So we highlight them there. And if we scroll farther down, you can see that we have our new databases, um, or if we ever have a trial of a database, it'll be listed here. You can um, click on this share icon to link directly to, um, if you wanted to share this with the student and you felt like it would be hard for them to search this list, you can copy this into um, another browser window and it'll take you directly to this resource. When we log into databases, we will go through a proxy and, and that URL will um, take you to the proxy page. Um, but that's just something to keep in mind if you wanna point something out to a student or link to it in your Blackboard course site. So I'm gonna get started by um, looking at the art and architecture source database as an example. And what I do wanna just mention is that you know, we have 109 databases. There won't be time to look through all of them um, in this session, but I will show a little bit of variety, but if you don't see something that matches your area of study or your needs, that doesn't mean we don't have it. Um, but, you know, the session just can't be comprehensive in that way. So I'd encourage you to look at the subject list for different departments um, to explore on your own what's available. So now we're in the um, Art and Architecture Source database. And one thing I wanna point out is that this is an EBSCOhost database. And so a lot of our scholarly databases, not all of them are um, from the EBSCOhost vendor. And so when databases are from the same vendor, you can um, do searches across databases. There's different things that you can use that for. And so I always like to tell people to just make note if you are in a database and it's um, from the same vendor as another database. So that means maybe you can, you know, research across those different resources and, and the databases, the vendors are set up to do that. Um, so I personally always like to do an advanced search. I feel like that allows me to have more control over what I'm doing and to get better results that more closely match my information need. So there's different ways um, we can search in this database. And one thing we can do is we can choose different databases. So that was um, at the top right next to the name of the database. And we can look at all the databases that are um, from the EBSCO host vendor and select different databases that may match the information, um, you know, or the research question that I have. So in this case, I may select Academic Search Complete. If I'm not familiar with what these databases are, I can click on that more information to get a description. So not only do we provide descriptions, but often um, in these databases, the descriptions are available as well. And then I'll select OK. And now if I select Show All, it'll show the different databases that I'm cross-searching with my search. So you can um, start your search in different ways. You know, at CCS Libraries, we have a lot of print periodicals, but what I do wanna mention is that in the databases, um, different journals are indexed electronically. So if you're looking for a database, or excuse me, a journal 
um, that we have in print and you want to see what our electronic access is, you can search in the database to find that out. So I'm going to look for the photography um, journal Aperture as an example. So I'm going to start by just searching for Aperture. And what I want to do is select a field and I'm going to um, select the source. And the source is the journal. So you can also search a journal by the ISSN number and that would be the most um, specific way to look for it. If, because if I look for Aperture, it may pull up other things that have that word that aren't the specific journal. So just keep in mind that is um, something you can do. So you can see I have um, 4,700 results. And what I'll wanna do is use some of the filters to narrow the search a little bit more. So you'll wanna select full text so that you can get access to the full content of an article. And you can see it reduced to 1,800 items. Um, you know, it's great to look at abstracts as well, um, but if you're wanting to read and review and download articles, you'll need to select full text to do that. And then I'll want to limit my publication date potentially, and so I'll do that as an example to the past, um, let's do five, five years. So you can see these are the different articles that are indexed. Um, that we have from Aperture over the past five years. And if I wanted to refine my search further, I could look for a specific artist, I could look for an exhibition. So there's different ways to really um, look within a journal to find, you know, how it's providing coverage of different events or people. So, I'm going to do a different search just to show you the variety that you can have in um, EBSCO databases. So I'm gonna change my, my databases to, um, let's see, what was I gonna do? Academic Search Complete, we'll remove art and architecture source, we'll do applied um, science and technology source, as well as newspaper source plus. So, Academic Search Complete is a multidisciplinary database. Um, applied Science and Technology is a science and technology focused database and Newspaper Source is a newspaper database. So again, I'll go do the advanced search. And there's different ways I can start my search, but if I'm searching not for a journal, but more topically um, for information related to an area of study, I will come up with the keyword terms, at least that to start, that I think relate to um, my topic. So I'm going to look for information on um, sustainable or green transportation um, models. So to start, I'll look for green um, or sustainable. And as I start to do that, other terminology will be suggested, and you can pick what um, makes sense to you. So I'm gonna just start with green or sustainable, and then I can always expand it. If I wanted to do the different, maybe I wanted to do sustainability, I could put an asterisk, and I'm not gonna do that right now, but I just wanna show that to you. So if I use an asterisk, it will look for all the different root endings of a root word. So that's a good um, trick to keep in mind. Um, but now we can start to refine and look at different terms, right? So we have sustainable transportation, urban transportation. Um, and what I'll do is I'll take some of these terminology and put them back into the search box to refine my search further. Um, so that's just a strategy for you. If I look at a record, I can find more information. So what I can see is that there's the abstract, there's the subject terms, and these are all hyperlinked. I can look at the journal, which again is called source in the database. And I can either download a PDF, which is over here, or look at the HTML full text, which was farther down. If I wanna share this article with students, I can use the permalink 
And this link will um, allow them to get directly to this page instead of having to search through the database themselves. And then you also have the option to add this to a folder. So you will need to sign in and it's a free account and I'll show you I have one. Um, and mine is just attached to my, oops, wrong one. Mine is attached, if I select the right Gmail, to my CCS um, account. And you can see that within the EBSCOhost databases, you have the option to create folders and to organize content that way, as well as share folders with other people who have EBSCO folders as well. So if there's a group of students or if you're working with students, you can collaborate in that way. So the last thing I want to show you is um, in this in the EBSCO host databases is the option for um, search history. So this will only works for like the session you're searching within. Um, but what you can see is that all of the searches I've been doing, including our original searches for um, the Aperture Journal, are here. So, right, I did this search and I spelled transportation wrong, and you can see I only had 32 results, um, and that one was 14. So you can see the different results that your searches are getting, and as you make successful searches, you can create search alerts so that you will be able to find new articles that are indexed related to your search. So that's just um, a cool feature that's available for you. Okay, so I'm real quickly gonna show a few other databases just to give you a sense of what's available. So I wanna show Nomen Workshop, which is a great um, database for entertainment arts, illustration, and foundations. So what this is, is it has a lot of videos um, on different types of drawing, on digital drawing, on um, game design. So we can go to entertainment design and select anatomy and find different modules related to anatomical drawing. So this is something if you are teaching in this area, you may wanna explore and share with your students. So the next um, database I'll show is Ad Access. And this is a really great one for communication design, liberal arts, advertising, and illustration. And the thing that's nice about Ad Access is that it's um, an archival collection of newspaper advertisements from 1911 to 1955. And there's different ways to search the collection. Um, but if I wanted to search Oops, I clicked on that one, but we'll come back to the, the um, individual records in a second. So if I wanna search the collection for illustration, I can do that. And again, um, similar to our database list, this is also available, or each item has tags. So what you can see is that based on what your search is, different things will populate and you can look that way. So if you were teaching illustration and you wanted to look at illustrations from a certain time period, this could potentially be a good resource. We can click on a record, as you um, saw a little bit earlier, and you have the option to zoom in, um, to look at an image in more detail, as well as get information about that record, right? So if I see it's from the Palm Olive Soap Company. Maybe I want to explore how, if I'm looking at it more from an advertising perspective, how that um, company has represented its brand over time. So the next database I will show um, really briefly is Material Order. So for those of you who use our material library, um, while it's available this semester, we know that a lot of students are doing their coursework online, and this is a great option for accessing a digital material collection. 
So what's nice about this is that you can um, look for different types of materials. So we can look for polymers if we wanted. And we'll wait for the images to load. And you know, we can continue to cross search to find um, specifically what we're looking for, or we could search for a material at the top and we can select a record to be able to find more information about that material sample. So that's a good option for people who are looking for these kinds of resources this semester. You can access the library homepage through the link on your CCS Access Manager. Scroll down to this quick search box, see where it says databases A to Z. We're going to click on that. So this is where you can find all of the databases that are available through the library to our students and our faculty and staff. Uh, you can scroll through if you know what one you're looking for, or if you just know you want something on trends, you can click over here and search by that tag trend. So these are the two that we found. <clears throat> these are the two that we subscribe to. We're going to start by looking at LSN Global. So the first time you go into any of the databases that are paid through the library, you have to authenticate through our proxy server. So you'll see a screen like this. This should only happen the first time you um, go in, either with a specific login on your computer or with your computer. After that, it should just pass you through on, your, on its own. But this is your Blackboard login information is what you'll put here, your username and your password. And then you click login and it'll take you in to our database. Now, if you look over here, it says Creative Studies. That's how you know you're logged into our account and you're not just on their, um, their like, free trial account. Um, let's, so let's take a look at what information is here. Uh, they provide, LSN and WGSN both, provide um, their research. It's all proprietary research done by in-house you know, employees who go and they and they find these trends and these different things that are happening in the world and they report on them. Uh, and so they call their the reports, they, they call them reports. So you can search through any de different types of reports by, um, by different um, ways. Mm -hmm. So you can see all of their reports or you can look for them through different ways of getting there. So the news one here is just what's happening right now. Like what have they seen that's new um, in the news. For trends, you can find macro trends and micro trends and design directions. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Um, under behaviors, you're looking at consumer behaviors. So big ideas, communities, opinions, and markets. So big ideas would be virtual luxury. Um, new luxury markets, antiviral fabrics. So these are some of the big ideas that people are looking for in their consumer um, purchasing. Communities is where they talk about different types of um, people, like where their personas are. Opinions, obviously are opinions. And then markets is for different market segments and different locations. Uh, sectors are for your market, market segments again. So you can look for trends in beauty, trends in fashion, trends in retail, youth trends. Series is a new thing that they've started um, where they group together reports around a specific topic. So obviously here we'll find a series on COVID and sustainability. And this is where you'd find a group of reports that are all related around that same topic. And then reports is where you can just go to find you know, the whole list if you just wanna see everything that's out there they have recent. Um, I already found one that I know has all the things I wanted to explain to you. So I'm going to type it in here to the search bar. So I already found this report. So I can go back to it again by typing its name in here. So this is what the reports look like on LSN. They look sort of like a web page. You scroll um, through them just like you would on a, on a website. But again, these aren't um, available. You can't search it on Google. It's proprietary information that's behind their paywall. Um, within these reports, you can find internal and external links. So they're talking here in this report about 
will COVID quell fashion's more is more mindset. Um, so to back up their opinions, they cite their sources and they actually provide links out to their sources. So this one is an external link. If you click on it, it says, according to the business of fashion, uh, this much clothing was sold. So where, you know, how do they know that? What is their source? So they linked right to it. So you can click on it and see it from the original source, see the information from the original source. Uh, they also have internal links where they link to other reports within the LSN report library. So here um, they're talking about the impact of water pollution. Um, we can click on that to see where they got that information. They got that information. They're citing um, a different report from a different, possibly a different author um, on the site and where they got that information about water pollution. Um, so one of the things that people really tend to like about these re reports and these databases is their images. So if you click on one of these images, you can, you can right click and you can save the image. You can copy the image. Um, as with everything else, we make sure that we cite um, where it came from. So if you're using this in a report for class, then make sure you're, you're, not, you're citing that it came from LSN or that it came from this report this author, this day, that you accessed it from LSN's database. Um, so you can save those pictures and you can scroll through the other pictures within the report as well. If you want to see all the pictures that are in this report, you can scroll through them. You can access the library homepage through the link on your CCS Access Manager. And there's really a couple of ways to get to video resources. Once you're familiar with uh, what's available, you'll just be able to go through databases A to Z and put in the name of the platform you're going to be using. For today, I'm going to use a research guide. It's called Video Resources. Way at the bottom, click on it. And here it is. Okay, on the left here, you'll see some tabs. The first two are um, the circulating and non-circulating videos that are located in the physical space of the library. Uh, circulating videos are available to students as well as faculty. Um, and um, you can put hold on them or you can come and take one out. Uh, for up to three days. Non-circulating videos are what's available behind the front desk. And these are for classroom use, so they can only be taken out for a classroom period or overnight. But what I think you guys, what you're interested in today is the streaming videos. So let's take a look. Streaming videos at CCS can be found a number of ways through two platforms called Canopy and Swank, or through a database called Electronic Arts Intermix or EAI. Let's look at that first. We do not control the content of this database, but it features a lot of very fine 20th and 21st century artists. This is really nice for performance art, for um, for film, for um, fine art practice, you have Mike Kelly, you have uh, Tony Orsler, you have just a lot of excellent artists represented. The first time you come to um, this database, you will have to authenticate, which just simply means you're going to have to fill in your Blackboard credentials. My browser recognizes me, so I didn't have to do that. Okay, so um, now let's take a look at Canopy and Swank. First, let's look at Swank. All you have to do is click on it and then again, authenticate uh, with your Blackboard credentials and you will see this. And this is um, a platform where we, sort of like Netflix, I guess, we purchase these videos um, 
for a limited period of time, I might add. So you will have to uh, make sure they stay ordered from year to year or semester to semester. Say I want to view Roger and me, or I want my students to view it. You click on it, you can click watch, and you have a nice high resolution video. You can share it, you can copy the link, copy the top one, and put that link directly in Blackboard for your students to directly connect with. But remember, they will have to authenticate as well. Now let's take a look at Canopy. You have to register for Canopy so that it recognizes that you're from CCS the very first time you do it. And the instructions for that are right here. But if you click on Canopy Stream, and it should be pretty straightforward, it's very intuitive. But here are instructions, nevertheless. And you just basically have to look for that orange bar, click on it, and do what it prompts you to do. So let's go back here, click on Canopy. So this, this is the content we have for you at this point in time. And anyone can watch these. These aren't restricted to a particular instructor or class. Let's say I want Metropolis to be shown in my class. Again, you click on it. You can opt to have it full screen, high resolution. If you want to share the link with your students, you go to share and copy and paste this and put it into Blackboard. Now let's say you want to order something because you're not seeing what you need. Do not use the system inside of Canopy. It'll just take too long to get to us. Instead, we have a course reserve form. It's here as well as here. You fill out what you need and you submit this digitally. It goes directly to the person who will see to it that what you need is ordered. Remember though, this is for classroom use, not just for your entertainment purposes. Okay, so um, there's also some excellent internet video sites that you might wanna consider. These are free. Art21, is a premier site that shows a lot of video, a lot of streaming video that you could assign your students. Um, the Smart History YouTube channel, I think is really rich for art history classes or visual culture. It's put, um, it's done in association with Khan Academy and the videos are short. They're put together by curators and museums and um, academics. So they're really nice quality. So that's something you want to consider as well as just plain YouTube. I'm going to put in Bauhaus because I happen to have found the other day two really top notch videos, full resolution. This one by BBC, it's an hour long. And then a second one I really like was put on by a, a German, company and it's in three um, segments, sections, and it uh, was done on the 100 year anniversary of Bauhaus. So don't forget about YouTube. You can copy and paste those links for your students as well. And then we have included a few other really good general open access sites um, that contain really nice videos for your students. So at this time, I'm just going to give you an introduction to Luna, which is our image database. And you can get to it through the library website, through collections right here. You log in using your Blackboard credentials. And remember, if you need help, there's always a direct link here, which will bring you to some instruction. Help is never that far away. So 
Sometimes it takes a minute, but here we are. So if you um, think that you will want to download some of the high resolution images found within um, Luna, you have to sign a contract and that can be found at the bottom of the landing page. Click right here. You fill it out digitally and just send it to one of the um, email addresses at the bottom. Okay, let's just look at a few things on the landing page. Up here is your general search bar and you have the option for an advanced search. Here's a little wheel that gives you some viewing options. I like 250 per page. You could have your thumbnail small, medium, or large. Over here are some important drop-down menu features. And on the left are the various collections contained within Luna. Um, I usually start by searching all collections. Um, CCS Images for Teaching, as well as the Detroit Institute of Arts Image Collection, are um, managed at CCS locally. We do those, and um, they reside on a local server. The rest are brought to us via subscription. So you can search Luna uh, by artist name, by period, by style, by search terms like appropriation or bicycle or, or just a number of ways. Because what the software does is it crawls through all of what we call the metadata, which is the information that's included with the image. And it looks for certain words. Um, so let's say, let me just put in Degas. So up comes 402 images from a number of sources. Um, I also noticed that some of the images are not by Degas, but his name might be in the information attached to the image, perhaps because um, he was a colleague or influenced um, a particular work of art. So if I want to narrow the search a little bit, I can go to advanced search. And I can knock out some of these collections. And now I have fewer images, only 232. But I still am seeing some images that are not by him. So I can just opt to search the creator field or the artist field by clicking on any of the images by Degas. Moving through the metadata on the left. Moving over through, hovering over the field, coming over here to search creator, click. And now there are 94 works of art, all clearly by Degas. So it's a little bit more um, manageable for selection purposes. Okay, let's say I want to um, put a group together for my class. I go to create and I click on media group and I name my media group. I'm going to name it Dega. Do I want it publicly viewable? Well, it will have to be if you share it with your class and all you have to do is save. And it will appear down in the lower right hand corner right here. And everything um, that I click on, on the plus side in the upper right hand corner, will then appear down here in this area. So let's just sort of randomly put some of these in. Okay, then I can click go and then what I have selected is featured prominently on the screen. Now I can just, let's say, mm, I don't like the order or I don't want this one anymore. So you go to manage group and you can remove the images 
you do not want, click Remove Selected, and it's gone. You can also go over here to the right, click Reorder, and move the images around. So let's say this is what you want to show your class. You can click Return, then the Slideshow button, and I want the information also available for my students to read, which is also referred to, as I said before, as metadata. And here you have it. And this is the way to get the highest resolution images available to your students. Let's say I want to download it into PowerPoint. Remember, you have to sign the contract first because um, that is how we upgrade your um, credentials in the back end of the system. But all you have to do is click Export to PowerPoint. And within a very short period of time, depending on the size, here it is. And there you have it, ready for you. And the information in this case can be found between the slides. So it's very easy to do. Let's now look at some of the features um, of the images themselves. Let's look for an image at the Detroit Institute of Arts wedding dance. I like to show this image because it, it really shows how detailed our images are. You can move around them, and in this case, you can study the underpainting, the drawing beneath. You can get closer to this image than you can in the museum. And then look to the left at all the information that we have attached to it. A tremendous number of of reference material, of resources. This is perfect, uh, provides a perfect starting point for a student writing a research paper. Okay, now this was a pretty short introduction. So um, if you need a refresher or you want um, to know to go a little bit deeper, you can always go to services and get to these how to videos. Click on Luna and there's some really nice videos for you to review or in some cases have your students review like how to log in find media groups and print. Now there is, like I said, some information that I haven't given you because it's a short presentation, but um, for media, some of these you will, if you are gonna be using this for class, and there are over 300,000 images available for your use, um, look at the in-depth video, it will really help you. And then don't hesitate to ask um, for help. Uh, we're available via telephone, Gchat, or um, a longer appointment. We can give you search tips and we can set up a Zoom appointment and go through the process in more detail.